Hello there everyone. Today we're going to tie this. This is called uh, support or the supporter and basically uh, this is a fly that's intended to fish uh, night fishing for, for sea trout but I'm pretty sure that a lot of the details and a lot of the techniques in this that are quite unique uh, could be applied very readily for a lot of different things. So, um, so this is a fly that has proven immensely, immensely efficient in, uh, in Danish waters and I'm sure this will find even salmon uh, and, and at least the techniques here is something that you probably uh, would not have seen before and is highly highly usable and, and, uh, and, and can be applied to a lot of different uh, tactics and a lot of different fly patterns. Okay, so basically this is a tube fly so um, we're gonna tie this on a, on a port tube uh, and because we want this to move uh, a lot of water we're gonna take the 3.2 millimeter port tube uh, and uh, the color here is, is uh, fluorescent pink uh, because that suits the, the general color scheme of, of this fly very very well. So I'm just gonna melt down the uh, the, the port tube here to, to have the uh, nice a nice uh, ending, nice column. And then I'm gonna take my thread. And because this is a fly that, well, basically it doesn't take that much time to make, I'm gonna, uh, normally if, if I were to make a tinsel body, I would start up here and then take the tinsel all the way down and then back up. But um, for this fly that is intended for night fishing and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's gonna look uh, not as beautiful as if we did it the other way, but this is going to be so much faster. So, uh, and, and this is a fly intended for fishing. So basically I just take this holographic um, uh, royal blue uh, tinsel from, um, uh, it's from Vebus, and then I tie this on here, and then I just move the tying thread all the way up to where the rest of the fly is going to be. That's around there. You can of course uh, define how long you want this fly and how big you want this fly yourself. But um, approximately four or five centimeters in total is, is a good length for, 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 for the Danish sea trout. And basically then I'm gonna turn my tinsel here. I apply quite a lot of pressure to this to to make sure that I get no uh, you know strange uh, bumps and stuff like that. It's a really nice color this uh, this dark blue this royal blue. So um what I would do uh, normally is to apply some varnish or some sabre gap to, to this body because if you apply some uh, some sabre gap to this body it will last for a lot more uh, uh, teeth of uh, of the uh, of the sea trout. I'll just take a look to see yeah it's, it looks nice and even it is a bit more bulky a bit bigger down here and that's that's due to to the uh, the tube fly holder here has actually has actually expanded the tube otherwise this looks pretty good but uh, if you apply some varnish if I were to say let's let's say I wanted to tie four or five of these for my box I would do this section first and then simply every single time I had done one of these I would apply uh, glue and then and and then uh, start over because I would have the Body's ready then. Um, now we're doing this this video, so I, you know, I can mimic doing it, but it's going to take a bit of time for for the glue to uh, to um, to harden. And uh, I basically, I, I want to tie the fly here on the video, so I think I've explained how that should be done. Then we need something to support the sunga wing, and for for this uh, part of the fly, I'm going to take a bundle of uh, of Arctic fox in uh, in uh, in purple. As I said, this is a fly for the Danish uh, sea trouts, and uh, and it's a friend of mine uh, who's uh, who's a name brother of mine. His his name is Daniel uh, Brodersen, and uh, and he is one of the best sea trout anglers I have ever had the uh, the pleasure of meeting. And he is a really really cool guy, and he knows his stuff. He is yeah. 
he is a very very avid and extremely extremely successful angler and when this is the fly that he uses most of the time when he's fishing night fishing then that just that just really really stresses to me how good this pattern must be because um yeah he knows his stuff so shout out to daniel he's a really cool guy and a really 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 awesome awesome uh, sea trout fisherman so now i'm gonna take a small bundle of uh, of angel hair and uh, if you have one of these angel hair uh, uh, flesh flesh stash pots then uh, then to to stow your flesh is just so much more easy so i'll take a bundle of of angel hair this is some variety of of purple it's not really it's not really that important and it's the finishing part of this fly that in particular makes this fly this pattern stand out and makes it it, it kind of unique because um, it really is is a genius way of, of doing the, uh, the, f the finishing touch on, on this fly so then we need to have a sunker wing and uh, and for this you could use uh, you could use uh, you could use rabbit uh, you could uh, which, which I'm gonna use here you could also use uh, opossum or or you could use uh, bisam or, or, or whatever is, uh, preferred sunker material you you you, uh, you like I like the uh, I like the rabbit here um, and uh, and it, it has to be black uh, for for the for the night fishing. So, but in order to get this uh, prepared the right way, I, I I take my scissors and then I simply I cut away some of the uh, some of the leather here. And the reason why I do this is I want this to taper. I want this to 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 taper down. Um, uh, with the fly here. I can see on this there is some. Some leather here I need to cut off. If you can hear some music in the background, I've put on a, a wind hood for the for the microphone, but if you can hear some music in the background, it's because our um, uh, the, the <laughs> here in the showroom uh, there is a this is a big building and and uh, on top of us is 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 actually a gym where they are uh, you know a, a boxing gym. So so they they're listening to some quite a uh, uh, intense music and they're just uh, I don't know pounding away at one another I guess so basically I have the songer here and as you can see it tapers now and uh, and then I tie this on top of um, of the uh, of the Arctic fox wing but I do not cut, and that's very important. I do not cut this this piece of the uh, of the wing away because we're gonna need that later on. So basically, I just turn this back around, and then I I tie the tying thread all the way up to that. So I force it backwards. And then I move the tying thread a bit further out onto the tube, like this, maybe a couple of millimeters, something like that. Because now we need the finishing part of this fly. And that's the trick that I really have uh, been wanting to show you. And the trick that, that's very, very neat and really, really um, usable uh, for, for, for a lot of different stuff. So for this trick we need some um, Microlon in black. And, uh, and, and we need a, you know, a decent amount. The Microlon here is, is a unique, unique material. If you haven't tried out the Microlon, then I urge you, urge you to do so. It's, it's an awesome, awesome material. It's very, very lively in the water. It's perfect for hackles like the one, like the one we're going to do now. It's genius for pikes. It's genius for bait fish and, and for a lot of stuff. This really, really is an awesome material. So because this is, uh, this is too long, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fold it in half and then I'm going to cut off half of this. Like so, and then I'm going to take. You want to tie these flies in 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 twos because then I'm going to put half of the the material, the microlon, off to the side, and then I'm going to take the other half and I'm going to pull out here, so the ends are uneven. And when I do that in one end, ta-da! It's magically also done so in the other end. Then I'm going to leave the microlon for a second on the table because I want to mix it up with some uh, some flashable. And this flesh abu is, is uh, I think it's called sky blue. I, I can't recall or if it's called grape. It's it's a mix of blue and uh, and purple and and there's some pink and uh, a few strands of silver and uh, and uh, and um, pearl I think also in here. 
and I take a bundle that is maybe a little less than uh, than for the Micron. And again, this is too long, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna find the uh, approximately middle of this, cut cut it over, cut it off, and then leave um, the one of uh, one of the bundles on on the other part, so I have for the next fly. Then I'm gonna prepare this exactly the same way. I'm gonna pull some on some of these so that the ends here are not uniform in length. I'm gonna put it on top of my micro lawn and have this together in one bundle now. And then I'm gonna try to try to mix it up a bit. Basically just you know manipulate it a little and try to turn it over and switch hands and stuff like that. It's not gonna be a completely completely mixed in between one another, but that, that's okay basically. So just just get it a little mixed up. That's okay. So I have something now that, that is is a little mixed up, not too much, but a little. Um, I'm gonna put it down on the table. And then I'm gonna make a dubbing loop. Because we're gonna use this dubbing loop to make a hackle. I'm gonna put the dubbing loop off to the side there. I have my dubbing loop now. You see I have my dubbing loop here. I don't know if you can see that, it's a fairly thin thread. But then I'm gonna take my flash and my microlon and put it inside the dubbing loop. So it, it about is is half half on, on each side. Like this. And then I'm gonna distribute the microlon and the flash with one finger very, very carefully. So it there is as few places where this is laying on top of one another. You see? I, I spread this out. And this way I'm gonna make a flash microlon heckle that's gonna really really have an amazing amazing movement in the water and it's gonna look awesome and uh, and it, it really is a nice trick to do it like this and microlon and fleshabu in particular are the best suited materials for for making making these uh, these flash uh, dubbing brushes i'm gonna take my my dubbing reel this is the cf design one uh, and it's as you can see it's just so so smooth and so so awesome to work with. And then I turn my my dubbing uh, dubbing loop and as you can see now I get this really really brushy really really big um, dubbing brush. If you have a dubbing brush tool you could of course make some of these in advance and then you would have them basically ready to go whenever you wanted to tie some of these. Um, and and I use my dubbing needle quite a lot to pull out any any material that is, is starting to you know uh, be be bundled up because uh, because I don't want that I want this to be as much like a hackle as possible like this I'm gonna give it one more go here. Get back to where you belong. Then I try to get the material folded down underneath here, simply with two fingers here. Try to fold it down underneath. And then I hold everything here in place. And then I turn this as a hackle. Fold everything back here every time before I turn. Oh, crap, 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 crap. It broke. It broke. I need my... Oh, uh, crap. My dubbing loop broke. <laughs> I think I can... Probably save it. If I can get my... I think I saved it. I got my, uh, my trusted CF Design hackle plier. Uh, and clamped down on the... Uh, and got it to to clamp down on the uh, on the dubbing loop here. <laughs> I'm 
that can happen you know that's annoying if it does but I, I, I think I saved it here still I continue to fold everything back before I turn then I'm gonna tie everything down here using the thread now you can see you have this really really big and and insanely uh, lively uh, hackle here from the flesh and the uh, the microlon I have to trim this take my dubbing needle and if there are some strands that are not pulled out of the uh, that are clumped together you basically can 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 pull them out here so so they will be they will be part of the hackle again like this and now for the finishing touch you need to take the flesh and the microlon and then generally comb comb it on each side of the uh, of the sunker wing that you have laying on top here because we want we want the materials here we want the flesh and the microlon to kind of be uh, on the sides of this and and be kind of like wings or fins out here in front here so I pull the I, I try to fold all the flesh material down on the sides here and then I pull the sunger up here I fold everything back and then I tie down the sunger it messed it up a bit that the uh, uh, that the heckle broke it's definitely fishable, but it's not as beautiful as it would have been without because a lot of the flesh were, is, is now stuck in, in the middle and stuff like that. So, so basically, um, it's not as good looking, but out in the night in the, where the sea trout will see it. And to cut off the leftover of the, uh, of the, the rabbit, I use my... I use my knife to cut it away. Then I make a small head here. And I take my tying thread, make a whip finish. And then to finish this fly, we need to look at the proper proportions and see if everything is well. And also we need to cut away uh, all the, the flesh that is underneath to kind of give it a, a bulky head that moves a lot of water, that, that kind of sticks out. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see now, that one is too big. As you can see now, you have these, these really, really well moving uh, uh, fins on either side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the material that is underneath here. I'm going to try to get still leave a lot of materials for the for the for the wings for the sides of the fly but i'm going to take all of this that is underneath here i'm going to hold it up and then i'm going to cut it off so it's approximately 1 cm this will give you kind of a kind of a weird looking beard underneath here but this beard will really really make your fly uh, move a lot of water and that's the general idea of this is you have these two you have these two wings here on the side with the, the with the wing on top and then you have the kind of beard underneath to push a lot of water uh, in in the night and that's that's generally it if you don't like this last finishing touch for let's say for for tying salmon flies then then uh, then even just leave it there it will give a really really cool looking um, 
hackle this for you know any types of flies and and for pike flies and and uh, you know, musky flies and perch flies and stuff like that. It really is cool to to use these uh, the, the 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 ideas here. I think that some of the flesh is a bit long on this side here, so I'm gonna trim this down a bit. I'm not gonna cut you know directly across. I'm gonna cut very carefully uh, not completely one strand at a time but but as little as possible and then I'm going to look at the other side well, there's, there's a few here that was a bit too long and what you what you get now is is you have the the wing in the middle and you have these two fins or wings or whatever you call them on the sides that when you stop moving the fly really will pulsate and give a lot of life. You have the uh, the the underside here that that moves a lot of water, and uh, and and then you have a perfectly tapering uh, wing uh, that is that is more more powerful in the front due to the uh, due to the uh, the Arctic fox, and this is just. This is just a really, really awesome pattern that has caught so, so, so many sea trouts in uh, in Denmark over uh, over the last couple of years. So basically, there you have it. Uh, it's called Stutten in Danish. Uh, uh, translate that to you know the support or the supporter, because uh, there is there is things to support the wings. There is thing, things to support the entire thing of this, and uh, and uh, basically. Uh, Ah, we need we need one final touch, and the final touch is of course to to get the tube in the right um, in the right way. I'm gonna fold all this back, then cut off the tube there, and then without <laughs> and this is the tricky part. Without melting any materials, we need to melt this back to give it the column here in front. Gonna do this careful. So there you can see it from 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 the front. The support, really really cool cool looking fly. Well, that was it for now. As always, um, if you enjoyed the video and and you think that this uh, this pattern is something that you might be able to use, then swing by my web shop. It's called Nordic Anglers. We have all the materials for this fly in stock. Um, and, and we have a complete material kit for this fly uh, ready uh, to go. So you just have to, you know, press the button one time to buy it all. Um, thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't done so, it would mean a lot to me if you would, uh, if you would subscribe to the channel. Good luck fishing.